Hi, everybody. Happy January. A chubby little snowman had a carrot for a nose. Along came a bunny, and what do you suppose? That hungry little bunny, looking for some lunch, ate that little snowman's nose. Nibble, nibble, crunch. So sometimes I do these things just for me because if I get a kick out of them, I think the children are gonna get a kick out of them too. January has always been a hard month for me um, as a teacher just to pump myself up and get myself going. So in January, I tried to do lots of little celebrations, fun things to make coming to school more fun for the children and to make it more fun for me as a teacher. And so I wanted to share some of these little simple celebrations um, that you might not know about. One of them is called Compliment Day, and that's coming up um, the end of January. And on Compliment Day, you might talk about what a compliment is and how you feel when you get a compliment. You could give every child a cotton ball and let them give a cotton, a cotton ball a compliment to a friend. You could also have a compliment jar for your class. And every time somebody compliments them, be it a special teacher or, or somebody, another teacher, when you, they see you walking down the hall quietly, you can put a pom-pom or a bling-bling or a button or something in the jar. And when the jar is full, then the children get a special reward like an extra recess or a popcorn party or something like that. It kind of encourages them to work together and cooperate. Another very important holiday that you might not know about is Kazoo Day. And all you have to do is have the children bring in old toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls, cut the paper towel rolls in half, um, let the children decorate these. And if you punch a hole at the top, just punch it down a little bit, put wax paper and secure it with a rubber band and you have a kazoo. And you can play name that tune and you can sing alphabet songs. I'm sure you can tie this in with standards somehow. Uh, another day that you might not know about, um, this is vocabulary parade day and you let each child choose a vocabulary word. Um, I'll tell them about this on Monday, and they have all week to come up with a vocabulary word, and they can make a costume, or you can just give them a strip of paper and let them decorate it with the word, and you pin it on them, and then you walk around and you have a vocabulary parade and talk about what your word means. Um, so these are all just simple holidays. One of my favorite ones that teachers told me about, they had a party, a birthday party for alphabet letters. And so the children all made crowns. They chose a letter and it could be their name or just um, you could randomly let them draw a magnetic letter and that's their letter and decorate the crown and they get to wear their alphabet crowns. Um, you could let them make some little bling bling necklaces for wrapper necklaces and do your alphabet songs. And then um, you can get this little birthday cake pattern. This is in our happies. And if you put magnetic tape on the back, you can put this on a magnetic board, and the children can put the letters in there. Yo, G, it's your birthday. Let's all read like your birthday. Ga, 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 ga. And I'm sure a lot of you use that song. I love that song, and it's so much fun to sing it with the children. And if you just put this on a board, um, they'll just take the letters and sing to themselves all day long. So um, I also wanted to share some more academic things with you this um, evening. And most of these come from our January Happies. And just to let you know, you can download um, the preview free. And it's got lots of good things in it, like a good morning um, handshake. And this one is good because your fingers don't actually touch. So if you've got germs going around in your room, it's called the Bow Wow. Bow Wow. W-O-W, bow, wow. Um, there's another uh, handshake that you can do, and um, this one is the potato handshake, and so you give each other a baked potato and french fries and a tater tot, and that takes some eye-hand coordination to do that. I've got a couple cheers in there that you'll like. One of them is the mitten cheer. I love this one. 
And sometimes you have to explain that to the children, especially those that live in southern states and they don't always know how mittens go when you try to clap them. I also love the trucker cheer. Show me your steering wheel. Uh, honk, honk. Good job, good buddy. And um, another cheer that we've got this month is the bubble gum cheer so that children get out their bubble gum, put it in your mouth. And I can get a gym full of a couple hundred kids quiet with the bubble gum cheer. It just helps them focus a little bit. I've got some finger plays this month for you. Show me your 10 little friends. 10 little friends came out to play on a very bright and sunny day. And they had a little talk. Talk, 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 talk. And they took a little walk. Walk, 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 stop. Till they came to a great big hill. And they climbed to the top. And stood very still. Till they all tumbled down. And fell to the ground. We're so tired, they all said. So they all went home and went to bed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good night. And if you lower your voice and say the finger play slowly as you end, it kind of brings the children in and engages them. Well, here's another idea from the Happies. This is Carolyn Koslowski's idea. She calls it book nooks. And so you have the children get a partner. And a really good thing to do is to get craft sticks and put light stickers or upper and lowercase letters on the bottoms of the sticks. And you pass these out on Monday and let each child choose one. They find their partner, and that is their study buddy for the week. So all week long, that's the person when you do partner activities, when you play a game or um, when they read to each other or when you um, help each other get your winter coats on. Um, that's their study buddy all week. And um, so when you have special reading time, the study buddies get to choose what Carolyn calls a book nook. And they're little craft sticks with different places the children can read with each other, like by the teacher's desk, in the hall, favorite one, under the table. And so you put different special places where the children can read with a buddy and um, encourage them uh, to take turns reading. You can also um, encourage them to tell their partner one compliment and one positive thing about their reading when they finish. And so I just thought that was a wonderful way to encourage children to read with each other and also make it a little bit more exciting than just sitting in your chair. Um, there are some fun activities for this month, and one of them is a song that goes to the tune of Bingo, one of my favorite tunes. There is a word, family, you should know, and op is its name, oh, T O P top H O P hop M O P mop they end in up you know there's a word family you should know I think you got it um you could let the kids make a little book like this they could do a different word family every day and then write other words that end with that rhyme you could also use one of these songs for each week, make a big house each week. And um, like one week you might wanna do the at family and you would sing this song every morning at circle time or morning meeting. And then during the week as children come up with other words that end with that rhyme, you could write them there. So it could almost be like an anchor chart with at words. Um, another good thing to do with onset and rhyme is to let the children make a little rhyme house. And so I'll show you this one. Um, it's got at at the top and then they open it up and they write words or draw pictures. And so this is very open-ended. Some of your children might just be able to draw two pictures that rhyme. Others can think of all sorts of different words that end with that sound. And I'm gonna show you how to make this little house. Um, one other time we will do a whole Facebook Live on different things you can do with these books. So you fold the paper in half lengthwise, hot dog fold, and you fold the corners to the middle like 
this. And then you fold up the bottom like this. And it kind of looks like a house. And it's good for word families. Um, it's also good after you've read a story that they could write the title of the story and open it up and draw their favorite part. So it's almost like a book report for young children. Or they could actually write stories. Um, you can also put a number on here and open it up in different ways to make that number. So it's really good open-ended activity. Uh, another idea this month tying in with a snow theme, um, Carolyn calls these snowflakes words. So you would get like a tub of rice or salt or sand or something like that. And you write your high frequency words you're working on on little pieces of paper and the children dig through the snow. And when they find a word, they get to write it on their sheet of snowflake words. And it's just a little bit more fun than write your high frequency words. And they have to dig for them and find them. Uh, another idea she shares is with lima beans. And so if you get the large lima beans, the jumbo lima beans, you can write your sight words on these and put the lima beans in a tub and they find the beans with the words on them and write them. Now, I'm showing you things with words. You could do this with alphabet letters with the younger children. You could do this with shapes. You could do this with numbers. Uh, older kids, vocabulary words, anything that you're working on, it's just going to be a whole lot more fun if they dig in the snow and they find it and then they write it. Uh, another idea I wanted to share with you, the dish and pokey. You put one finger in, put one finger more, shake them all together and then lay them on the floor. Add them both together and you don't want to stall. Now you have two in all. Put two fingers in, put two fingers more. I think you got it. Um, another good uh, activity with addition is to have the children trace around their hands, cut them out, glue the palms, just glue the palms to the paper, and then they can do different addition equations with the little fingers. So, um, Two plus three equals five. For the younger children, you could do the same thing, but just use one hand and do some of your finger plays. Five little hot dogs frying in the pan, the grease got hot and one went bam. Four little hot dogs frying in the pan, the grease got hot and one went bam, and so on down to the end. So, you know, anytime they have that concrete manipulation, it makes learning so much more fun and it sticks it in the brain when you do things like that. Well, my time's almost gone. I've been told I'm only supposed to do Facebook Live 15 minutes. Just a few more things. Um, I, we've got songs this month um, for, of course, your 100-day celebration, Zero the Hero. And I love uh, to go online and you can get a $100 bill template and let the children put their face in the $100 bill, and you can make a little book about things they would do with $100. Um, of course, Dr. King's birthday is coming up, and I'm going to sing you this song. My daughter wrote this. Dr. King stood up for justice. He stood up for equality, too. Dr. King stood up for children. He stood up for me and for you. So now we stand up, stand up, stand up for Martin Luther King. Stand up, stand up, stand up for Dr. King. Dr. King wanted all of America to be tolerant, fair, and free. He stood up for what he believed in. He stood up for you and for me. So now we stand up, stand up, stand up for Martin Luther King. Stand up, stand up. Stand up for Dr. King. Dr. King taught us all to be dreamers. So one day the world could begin to judge people based on their character. 
and not on the color of their skin. So now we stand up, stand up, stand up for Martin Luther King. Stand up, stand up, stand up for Dr. King. And I can hardly sing that song without getting chill bumps. I just think it's so wonderful. And I love the vocabulary, you know? Um, tolerant. You could take a different word each day. Today, our word is tolerant. What does it mean to be tolerant? That means if somebody pushes in you in line, you go, please, go ahead. Go right in front of me, and you'd be tolerant. Um, it's also great to talk about heroes with Dr. King and what kind of hero you'd like to be and what are some characteristics of heroes. Well, time just goes too fast when I do these Facebook lives. I might have to do them a little bit more often. Just wanted to mention, I've got a lot of seminars and conferences coming up. If you go to my website or Facebook, you'll see all of the ones I'm going to be doing in, in Fort Worth and New Orleans and St. Petersburg and Baltimore and Indianapolis and lots of, lots of other good places coming up this spring. So I look forward to seeing you, but if I don't see you there, I'll see you on Facebook Live. If you learn something new today, put your thumb up next to your chest. If you learn more than one new thing, put up a finger for each additional thing and pat yourself on the back and say, I'm a great teacher. Take care. God bless. And um, I'm going to go change my clothes and put on my team shirt. You know there's a big bull, a big football game tonight. Go dogs.